Hello everyone, this is Krista Glenn, Director of Marketing at ABC Omega. ABC Omega is a Buffalo, New York-based global organization specializing in multinational credit and collections. Since 1929, we have been making good on promises for commercial clients around the world, providing a full array of credit to cash solutions, including first and third party collections, credit and education services. Thank you for attending today's webinar, the pros, cons and impacts of first party outsourcing, this is the fourth program in our 2021 webinar series. Welcome back to those of you who have attended any of our previous webinars. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we hope you enjoyed today's program. Handouts for the presentation are available in the GoToWebinar control panel in the handout section. This session is being moderated by members of ABC Omega's business development team, Dominic DiLoretto, Senior Vice President of Business Development, and Antonio Vasquez, Regional Vice President Great Lakes. I'd now like to turn things over to Dom to introduce today's panel. Thanks, Krista. Appreciate the introduction and thanks to everyone for joining us today for this interesting topic. Um, on the call with us today, uh, as we display their pictures, uh, we have first Mark Miazga, who basically we refer to as I Am Legend over at Parker Hannafin. <laughs> Mark has been with Parker for more than 30 years and is currently responsible for over $510 million in AR for Parker's Aerospace Group, Motion Systems Group, Latin America, and Mexico operations. He's responsible for evaluating the risk of new and existing customers by analyzing various credit reports and financial statements. He travels frequently, well, prior to COVID, let's say, um, to various locations of Parker, and um, he also makes sure that corporate policies are complied with as well as procedures. Uh, in addition, he provides training wherever there's needed, and he also manages bankruptcy filings and coordinates with in-house counsel. So Mark's not very busy. He's an advisory council member of the Association of International Trade and Trade, Trade Finance Professionals, ICTF, and a member of the Credit Research Foundation, and he's the president of the Commercial Foreign Credit Group which is managed by ABC Omega. Oh, that's true, I forgot about that. <laughs> so welcome, Mark. Um, second on your screen in the middle is Chip Lear. Chip is a results-driven leader with a significant progressive experience in finance management within publicly held multinational diversified industrial organizations. Chip has been with Parker since 2017. As corporate credit manager, he oversees credit for the Parker Instrumentation Group and Engineered Materials Group for North America. And on the far right of your screen, we have Bob Susak, a credit professional with more than 25 years of experience. Bob has been part of Parker Hannafin's credit team for 21 years. He currently manages customer credit portfolios for 20 business unit, units within Parker's filtration and fluid connector operating groups and Parker Hannafin, Hannafin Canada while overseeing AR assets totaling $325 million. Bob's a certified global credit executive and a member of the ICTF as well. So welcome folks. Um, I, I've just got to stop us right here. This is Krista Antonio, it's highly irregular, but there's already questions coming in from our participants, which is not usual, but I'll, I'll, let me just address these quickly before we move on to the program. The first question that came up is, Mark Miazga looks familiar. Has he been in movies or in a, in a television show or something like that? Well, I have to say, as a matter of fact, that the person that asked the question has a keen eye because Mark has been a stunt double as well as a stand-in for Tom Cruise in every Mission Impossible movie. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, very much for um, sharing that with us as well. Um, next up, we have uh, another question real briefly. This is a good question, though. How, how did a guy named Donald get the nickname Chip? Um, that's an interesting question. As the story's been told to me, in Chip's previous jobs as a credit executive, he earned the reputation um, essentially of being a, a very aggressive credit executive that chips away at the company's DSO, hence the nickname Chip was bestowed on him. Unfortunately, as he moved over to Parker Hannafin with Bob and, and Mark and their long tenure there, they didn't give him that much credit for chipping away at TSO. So instead, their initiation for chip 
was uh, being a relative newbie was to have him clean their cars at the office during those rough <laughs> Cleveland winters. And it looks like there's a third question, Antonio, if you can quickly address that. Yeah, let me see here. This question looks like it's coming in. It says, okay, here we go. Question about Bob Gusek. His photo gives me the impression he is a mild manner kind of guy, sort of like Clark Kent. Is that Bob's demeanor? All right. <laughs> That's funny. Um, it's funny you mentioned Clark Kent. Um, prior to joining Parker Hanvin 20 or something years ago, um, Bob worked for a huge and well-known steel company, uh, I believe. And from his first day at Parker Hanvin, his manager dubbed Bob as the man of steel. His excellent work at Parker Hanvin over the last 20 years has perpetuated the nickname of Clark Kent's true identity. <laughs> there you have it. All right. That's well, quite the intro. That's that awesome. is quite the intro. Let's uh, definitely move on to some substance now as well. Awesome. All right. So here's a little bit about uh, Parker Hannafin. Uh, Parker Hannafin is the world's leading manufacturer of engineered solutions for a wide variety of industri industrial markets, including aerospace, fluid controls, climate control, filtration, hydraulic, and electromechanical. Each business group has its own president and group controller, a centralized credit, but a decentralized collections function. So if you don't mind me asking, maybe for the audience too, because I'm still a little unfamiliar, can you explain a little bit more about what engineered materials mean? Yeah, that sounds pretty generic. I don't know what that means. Who handles engineered materials? Is that you, Chip? That's, that's me. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, think about things that go into uh, really uh, stop uh, things that go into engines, things that go seals, any type of uh, uh, vibration control, um, anything that can be manufactured that can uh, fit in tight spaces. Gotcha. Okay. And what's what's motion systems? I, you know, to me, it's like, are you guys building? Terminators or something over at Parker <laughs> Hannafin. What are motion systems? Uh, motion systems, real simply put, uh, dealing with hydraulics and stuff. So cylinders, you'll see a, a uh, caterpillar bulldozer out there with those big shiny arms that are sticking out. These are cylinders. These are some of the parts that we make. Uh, the hydraulic hoses, uh, actually that would be considered part of Parker, uh, the fluid connectors group. But everything um, syncs together in one, one way or another. I see. Awesome. Great. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. All right. So now we'll um, just briefly look at the uh, first party AR outsourcing discussion topics for today. I won't read every bullet, but this is just an overview of what we'll be covering, I believe, on today's uh, call. So first, we'll have the pros and cons. Um, the second would be the process of uh, AR outsourcing. And the third would be the impact it will have with your company. So I guess we'll start with the pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that from the background um, on Parker's decision to outsource, I, I think, Mark, you were involved in the first um, engagement where you guys decided to outsource. Can you tell me a little bit of the impetus behind deciding on that? Sure. Now, this happened, uh, I'm not even sure how many years ago. Uh, probably over 10 years ago, one of our uh, aerospace divisions, this was like during the first round of uh, back in 2008, 2009, when the economy took a hit. Well, so did a lot of companies and like, like a lot of other companies, Parker did too. So we were uh, short staffed and a lot of things weren't getting done. So one of our aerospace divisions uh, have reached out to, to, to me and saying, what can, we, what can you do to help us out? And so, lo and behold, ABC Omega had a service that they offered something called Soft Call, where they are acting as a as a uh, a third party collector on behalf of Parker Hannifin. So it's not so so what the, what what we do is turn our accounts over to them, a handful of accounts that we did as a test, where um, uh, ABC Omega would would work with with the divisions. On helping them contact their customers, so we all know that customers all need to be contacted sooner or later. But you get more bang for it for the higher dollar amount, so they were concentrating on it. But even the smaller dollar accounts needed to be touched, and that's where ABC Omega came into play, 
to help this division uh, contact the customers that, that weren't getting contacted. Was it, Mark, was that, that I appreciate the background. Um, just for the listeners again, you're in a decentralized type of environment. Was that a tough decision for the divisions to get them to sort of buy into this? Because you see the AR, you see the DSO, and so you're responsible for credit overall, but now you're trying to convince a divisional president to go ahead and make that kind of decision. Was that difficult? Oh, definitely. Uh, nobody ever wants to admit that they need help. And so that's where uh, the corporate credit department came into play, where we had a coach coach each division saying, hey, this is a service. It's not any reflection on you. We need help. And the biggest thing with, with any company, you hear the term FTE, full-time employees. Well, companies want to want to have less full-time employees, but the work still needs to get done. So a third-party service isn't an employee. And so Parker looked at it, but again, it was it was a hard sell. But once once we, we got it sold, it was a no brainer. It start like I said, it start off with a handful of accounts and then see how it works and then throw more out as needed. And it's it's nice because it's not like it's all all or nothing. You pick and choose what you want. All right. Now Chip, um as I'm thinking about this for the primary factors that led to the decisions for your divisions. Um, were, were cost cutting, was that like the biggest thing or was there something else or just an, an internal staff that was inadequate to handle all of the extra work? Right. Yeah, you know, costs were certainly a part of it. Um, just being able to have the flexibility to scale up or scale down, um, having, uh, Having some having some turnover in employee turnover uh, over the years is, is somewhat of an issue for us, uh, being a large organization. So, um, you know, a lot of our divisions um, have have long term have had long term people, and if you get turnover in that in that area, um, you know, a solution such as such as first party collections is is really helpful to be able to to fit in those gaps. And if you know if you have any time. You know, if you have any um, time away from for folks, um, you have to be able to you have to be able to supplement with uh, with some other type of solution. Great, that's awesome. Um, so I I guess the last question we'll we'll talk about for this is um, probably a decision that every company has to make when they're looking to do a little bit of outsourcing. Um, did you at any point consider um, offshoring this project? And I don't want you to go into too much detail if you don't want to, but maybe you can give some of the maybe pros and cons in your decision or experience um, with offshoring versus um, using a domestic supplier. Yeah, yeah. A few years back, we took a took a look at this and and had a small pilot, um, but really it was uh, you know the 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 scope that we had was much larger, um, and really, but really didn't fit the needs of what we what we truly what we truly needed was just someone to come in and help us with collections, get more contacts. Um, you know, we had had some you know the uh, some of the struggles that we had with the pilot were really more related to logistics. You know, it had you know being offshore a little bit harder to control what's going on. Uh, certainly, uh, there were some cultural issues, uh, few uh, language issues. So it, it it makes it a little bit more difficult. You don't ever really feel like you have as much control uh, when there isn't someone that you can easily go and visit. Okay, that makes sense. That makes yeah, sense. it does. You know, obviously, then Chip. You know, the next thing as we move on is kind of the implementation. So in theory. Outsourcing is a great idea, whether it's onshore, domestic, or offshore, but implementation is so, it can be such a, um, a detailed type of exercise. Um, what was your experience when you did the project implementation for your divisions? Sure. We, you know, both, we had, we had two divisions that are, that are using uh, ABC Omega within my groups. Um, 
the, you know, really it's a matter of setting up, um, engaging, engaging the right people at the divisions with, with the folks at ABC Amiga, um, uh, setting a plan uh, or a treatment, trying to find out um, what, what Parker needs and what uh, ABC Omega can do, uh, can do best, you know, s set out a uh, standard operating procedure. So my, my two divisions had two, two separate kind of goals in mind. Uh, the first division really just needed a little bit of help. Um, what they found was that there were a lot of accounts that weren't being touched because the, the collectors were uh, engaged in quite a bit of um, uh, complex, complex disputes uh, and what I would call more, more complicated uh, collections. And a lot of their times were, were pulled away from pulled away from the mass amount of accounts that just needed a little bit of attention, needed some contacts updated and, up and such. So, uh, you know, it was really, um, you know, really just trying to get a little bit of extra help. Uh, whereas the other, the other um, division was really more of a, they had lost, they had lost some employees. They were working only with the temporary at, at the time for a number of months and things were really starting to regress. Um, obviously you can imagine that, uh, past dues were piling up, DSOs were, were going through the roof. Um, and then you start getting into what, what Mark and Bob and I focus most on, which is credit risk. And if you've got accounts that are, that are aging out, you're going to, you're going to struggle with that credit risk, uh, problem. So anyway, so their, their strategy was really to turn things around quickly. So it was a matter of getting, you know, giving up most of the port portfolio and then trying to work, work with the ABC Amiga team and, and again, resetting contacts, uh, making first contact or, or contact that, um, you know, restoring contact, uh, restoring those connections and then being able to document all that uh, in order to uh, really to resume a regular collection status. So. Um, so it was really kind of handing over the whole portfolio and saying, you know, do what you do best and let's, and let's turn this around. So. Great. Then, no, that's, that's great to hear. And I'm, and I'm glad that we've been able to, um, help you in that way. So, so one of the biggest hurdles, um, you, you usually encounter, I guess, when you're, you know, implementing the project is some hesitancy. So. Bob, if you don't mind me asking you, um, was, was there any hesitancy from your divisions when you decided to do some type of outsourcing or um, first party project? Uh, yes, there was, you know, there, there was some, some hesitancy um, for a number of reasons, but there was also a, a great need because for this particular division of mine, they had 1300 accounts, they didn't have enough resources. Um, so many accounts weren't being touched. They weren't able to focus in on their, their problem accounts and their problem customers. And it was, it was leading to a great financial impact on the business unit. So while there was some hesitancy in giving up control, there was also a great need because the metrics were, were obviously going the wrong way and something, something needed to be done. Uh, this business unit was not able to hire a full-time employee, so that's why we reached out to ABC to help us because, you know, we needed to give you access to our systems so that you could begin, you know, calling several hundred, hundreds of accounts that we couldn't touch while we, in turn, could work on some of our um, higher maintenance um, problem customers that, that had to resolve a number of uh, internal Parker issues. So, yes, there was some degree of hesitancy, but there was also a, a great need that something had to be done. Once we were able to give you access to our systems and, and, and give you the ability to enter notes and access invoices and to be able to recall documentation, you were able to, then to be much more productive and able to touch accounts that we didn't have time to touch. And uh, it, it turned out that it had great, um, great success and great impact 
financial impact on the business unit. Great. So, so let me ask Chip now, because I know that there has been a project recently, Chip, where you were involved in. Um, for any individuals on the call who might be considering a project like this, um, who is involved in the process, I guess, from, from a company standpoint? Um, who is involved with the implementation of the outsourcing? Sure. Most of the legwork um, was done at our division. And, and, and again, you know, to, to be a little bit more specific about Parker, you know, our, our divisions really operate as, you know, under, under the Parker Hannafin umbrella, but really as a separate business unit or as a separate business. So they manage their own finances themselves, which, you know, sometimes leads them to, again, have, you know, have some of these smaller issues or smaller uh, needs uh, f rather than a larger centralized company where where we would need where we need uh, where they where they would have a, a much larger focus. But anyway, the um, you know so it was the the a, a financial lead. So our our controller was involved. Um, we would have the AR AR folks, uh, IT as well. Um, there you know there are some uh, IT requirements. Uh, in order to make sure that we're getting our information to the Amiga, uh, ABC Amiga team, so that they can so that they can do their work, um, and then uh, you know just uh, you know setting up the agreements and, and getting things together. So really, I worked to make sure that those those folks were engaged and that they needed anything from uh, certainly from a corporate standpoint or or from a uh, uh, a leadership role, I would then provide it. You know, you know, Chip. Then you mentioned about IT and and um, how they were involved. For some companies, we've seen other other clients of ABC. That's probably the biggest challenge is is getting IT involved and giving us system access. And obviously, the vendor, whoever you choose as a first party provider, has to have the type of data security and meet and check all the boxes to make sure that your your systems are safe if we have access to them. Um, did, did IT give, I, I, I wasn't involved in your implementation, did IT have a lot of requirements and, and uh, were they skittish about this at all? So I, I think from an IT standpoint, I think we took a, uh, you know, just in general, you know, giving a view access to our uh, to our system, um, I think that's something that was uh, easily managed. Um, you know, the view access they were they were comfortable uh, doing that. But I think from an IT standpoint, I think there was the some of the or at least one of the some of the challenge was getting was getting the data over to ABC Amiga. And I had my two divisions took two two separate approach approaches as as oftentimes happens within our divisions, you know, the one division took a, took a little bit more simpler manual approach and said, okay, well, we'll, we'll send the file our, our, uh, you know, through the, uh, through the, uh, secure, you know, secure, um, uh, mail system. FTP. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> through that, <laughs> through that system. And, and, you know, and they, they pull that manually. They, they kind of set it up. It takes them probably five minutes every day. They do it daily. And they pull that, uh, they pull that together and send it. Our other division decided, you know what, we don't want to waste any time with that. So they, they were able to, to create a custom program that would, uh, load that every night automatically. And, uh, you know, it took, you know, so it was really kind of a two thing, two, uh, two sided approach in that the one division decided, well, we can get this up and running right away. We'll just take the, take a little bit of time every day to do it. The other division decided, well, we'll spend a little bit of time in programming. We'll spend a little bit of time to get this, and then we don't have to touch it. So two different sides of the two different sides of the coin, but uh, being able to 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 uh, achieve the same result. Okay, well, I would I would just like to add too, if I may, that I, I think what really helped uh, helped my business unit was that you guys were willing to to learn about our business and to learn about our customers, you know, because it's a big deal to basically, you know, give several hundred customers to you and say, hey, you know, 
you go and call these customers representing Parker Hannifin. So there's a little bit of concern about doing that, but you were able to, you, you were willing to learn about our business, learn about our customers, learn about our, our collection protocols as far as when we call and how aggressive, how aggressive are we when we call. So I, I think those are all very important nuances that need to be taken. Every business, every business is different. Every business yeah. has different needs, different requirements. So I think your flexibility really, uh, really helped a lot. Yeah, and that's thanks for saying that, Bob. Because um, you know, for the participants or attendees on the call today, um, first party essentially is that we call representing as Parker Hannifin, whatever division name it is. Uh, our internal folks here at ABC uh, contact their client base as a as basically a um, a division of Parker Hannifin. So it's very seamless that way. And if you start calling on clients on on a on a client and you don't know what the business is, what the product is, the service, uh, it, it gets a little it gets a little chunky and very quickly, like Bob said. I think their their customers would figure out that we're not part of Parker Hannifin. So the upfront learning, as Bob mentioned, was really important to learn the language and the vernacular and all the different terms for each division. Um, and I know in the case for all three of you that the treatment plans that we developed were different. One division wanted them called that day one past due, others a little bit before the due date. And others, you were sending us accounts where they were, you know, 60 or 90 days old when we started calling. So, um, who who was behind developing the the treatment plan again? Was that the divisions, or again, you guys drive credit from from uh, headquarters in Cleveland? Was that your call as to when they should be sent over to us? I think uh, I it's think a. It's a, yeah, I was going to say, I, I think it's a, a team effort between corporate and the division. Um, we may uh, insist that it should be sooner than later. In other cases, they may, the division may want to be just the opposite. They want to be it. They want they want to do it a little bit sooner than what we think. Uh, the key thing that comes down to it, the accounts weren't getting touched on a regular basis. Now they are, whether it's one day past due or 15 days past due, they are getting touched, and that was key for Parker. Yeah. So, I, I know, Bob. I, go, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, I, I, I think, think the, Go ahead. <laughs> the, I think the strategy has, has changed a little bit, too, you know, since we started the program three years ago, where, you know, in, initially there was so much to be done and so much to be caught up and, and, and so many customers that need to be touched that had older balances where because of the progress we've seen, you know, the, the collection strategy has evolved and, and, and changed, you know, over the years. So, um, but initially we had just a, a massive amount of cleanup that had to be done. So, but the division, obviously they know their customers, they know their customers and which customers need to be touched and which customers need the follow-ups. They're, they're able to advise you, you know, here are the customers, go touch these customers, go call them, go collect on our behalf while we can work on other more pressing issues that are more complex. Sure, sure. So I know, Bob, you mentioned part of the um, training uh, when you were speaking before. So I guess when you when you get into a project like this, uh, maybe from your perspective, you can elaborate just a little bit on what type of training was required, I guess, from both sides in regards to maybe the systems or having system access or um, reading an invoice and understanding what's on the invoice. Do you, How do you think that went? Was it labor intensive? Was it something that was easy to pick up? Um, what was your experience with that? Well, I think... Uh, because Mark had done a, a, some of the legwork in terms of giving uh, system access or getting to system access uh, for another business unit, it, it, it made it easier to bring my business unit onto the uh, soft call service because we had, we had worked with you, we had some experience with you. So 
from our vantage point, we had to give you the system access, the read-only access. Um, we had to give you the ability to uh, obtain the necessary documents that you needed. Um, we needed to provide you some, some training on the customers and who we are and our protocol and how aggressive or not aggressive are we with certain customers. And then as far as um, what you had to provide us was, um, you know, as far as what you needed um, in, in terms of being able to provide you the, the customers. Um, and we had to um, also get up to speed on what your reporting capabilities are and, mm -hmm. and, and learning how you provide communication to us as well. Yeah, and we noticed that uh, in all three of your cases, you've got system access that Big Brother is watching to make sure, again, how we're doing with the portfolios that we're managing on those different divisions of, uh, of Parker, which kind of leads us to, this is all fun. It's, it's great to talk about it, but it, you know the project doesn't mean anything unless there's a positive impact to AR and for the divisions, because uh, just us touching accounts is great, so those customers feel like they're cared for, but uh, we've got to get results for you as well. That's the bottom line in every project. So as we move on to the next slide, let's just talk about, you know, where, where the achievements are at this point in doing a small first party outsourcing. I think one division has one full-time uh, equivalent at ABC. Another division has one or two. So um, you, again, each division was looking at a cost decision. One was, do we hire somebody internally and pay them hourly, whether it's a temp or a full-time person, um, or we pay a flat fee to ABC to manage it? So I guess there was some work involved in de deciding on that pricing and billing. Now, we can even carve it down where we're doing for, I think, one of your divisions, we have half an FTE. So it's really small and scalable that way. Um, and it's it's by the number of accounts or by a full, you know, FTE flat fee price that that you work with us. So it, it right. can be scaled. I know, Chip, you were involved in heavily in the pricing for one of the most recent divisions to make sure that it met their needs. Um, we're, just tell us about your experience with that, with the pricing and the billing. Sure. The, uh, you know, again, you, you know, you point to scalability, um, just, you know, the, the, my latest division, again, it was kind of a, well, we got to hand over the full portfolio to start because, you know, really we're, you know, they were trying to reboot and really get back, uh, get, th get things turned around. So starting out, uh, in a larger scale where it was more like, uh, 800 accounts as opposed to 400 accounts, but then having the ability to be able to uh, pick back up some of those accounts and be able to re reduce that cost as uh, as as things scale back down. Um, so you know it, that was a division that had two and a half people collecting at one point, but was down to one temporary person uh, individual uh, doing the collection. So now we've we've got uh, you know we've got um, you know, basically the equivalent of one FTE um, with uh, with ABC Omega and uh, one one uh, FTE uh, that is a uh, uh, that is a Parker employee. Okay, and full disclosure to everybody. Um, again, we handle projects as big as forty people, five people, ten people. So uh, that this isn't our first rodeo. So our past experience with so many other clients has helped us to be able to pa pass on some best practices to, to you, Parker Hannafin, and your divisions, which, you know, through trial and error and learning the needs of other clients, we're able to essentially um, give you that knowledge base and, and transfer it over when we handle your clients. So, um, I, you know, I know, again, we're, 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 we're looking at an hour's time. We don't want to go too far over. So, Let's um, let's get into COVID nineteen, Antonio. So that's you know the 
one of the hot topics right now, obviously, it has because it's affected everyone and, and all businesses. So I guess my question to you is how has it impacted the process and in the first party project for you guys so far? Um, is, is there any technology issues? Have you noticed there um, any type of um, data security issues? Has anything come up on your end as far as, um, you know, since we've been in a pandemic for the last almost a year, over a year now, um, how has it been for you? I'll, I'll speak to that. Um, as far as for the my filtration division, um, you guys haven't missed a beat, and the the results and the performance has continued to be very strong, um, even throughout the pandemic. So you know we've continued to see continued progress in aged and disputed balances. Um, our, our reserves are down. Our DSO continues to be strong. And uh, we haven't seen any glitches uh, in what you've been able to do for us. That's encouraging to hear. Um, Bob, what do, you, what, do you have an idea as to how far the DSO dropped from your internal numbers and for the well, divisions we're handling? Well, we've been, you know, we've been on this project about three years now. It, it actually started out as as a six month short term assignment. Yeah. Well, we're we're three years we're three years into this now. Um, we've seen a about a seventy four percent reduction in our our aged and disputed balances as a result of this, and our DSO is down about sixteen days. Um, so it's it's again it's been a big help to our division. It's had great impact uh, to our division because again we've been able to use your service to touch a lot of customers to collect the cash that we need to collect while we focus on very highly intensive uh, maintenance problem customers that need a lot of time and attention and a lot of internal issues to resolve. So we've been able to address those. You know, while you've been able to to help us in touching a lot of customers in order to collect cash, so the DSO impact has been significant. The the financial impact has been significant because, you know, as as you know, we we are required to reserve balances when they reach a certain age, and with your help, we've been able to reduce those amount of reserves that are required because we've been able to work those accounts. Uh, while you've also been able to help us with our portfolio and collecting those customers that can't be touched. Right. And and um, for the uh, the attendees again, in this service, we don't touch the money per se. We do touch the clients by phone calls, emails, and so on. But um, the money is all directed right to Parker Hannafin's um, uh, lockbox for checks. So we never actually touch the money. Um, but but we appreciate what you're saying, Bob. But we we do the resolutions, and then and then the dollars just flow in right to your bank directly. So that's encouraging, Chip. Um, what kind of results have we had for your divisions? Yeah. So uh, you know, as as Bob mentioned, um, you know, just just some really in a short period of time, uh, my most recent division, um, you know, really not much more than a six period of time. We're looking at you know, a seven seven plus day drop in DSO. Um, Bob mentioned the reserves, which again is a direct hit to our uh, our net earnings. So 60% reduction in in those reserves. I'm sorry, 40% reduction in those reserves. 60% reduction in over uh, over 30 past, 30 days past due. Which again, you know, is is as uh, collections professionals, you know, we know. That if things get 30 days past due, that's when things start to get. Uh, if you're not contacting your customers and they get age out, the the, the type of collections you, that you have to do take longer and take time away from the from the rest of uh, the rest of their uh, their accounts. So being able to hit those things up front uh, certainly reduces those uh, those accounts that could be in jeopardy uh, for reserve. Um, you know, just in past due percentage. You know, just a, a 25 percent uh, reduction in past due percentage, which is which is just phenomenal. So yeah, well, well we you know again, if if the results aren't there, 
Um, Bob, I'm sure that that six month project would have ended if we weren't um, getting the results because, and we're, we're thrilled that it's six months has turned into three years. Um, it's never a long-term contract. We just do something on an annual basis uh, with our clients for the most part. But, um, you know, if we're, if we're not getting the job done and the money's not flowing in, I know that we're, we're not we're not earning our keep and sticking around that long. So as as we kind of move on, some of this I think we already touched on, but let's just sort of quickly. Um, the first point is, you know, what have each of you learned about outsourcing first party collections? Uh, I know Mark because I dealt with Mark initially a hundred years ago. And Mark had his hangups about about first party and if it really works or if it's if it's more trouble than it's worth. So let's start with you, Tom Cruise. What 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 have you learned from doing from doing this outsourcing first party? What have you learned or what what's changed your mind about the way you looked at it? I think with my my division being the guinea pig uh years ago, uh sort of speaks for itself now that we have Chip's divisions and some of Bob's divisions using it is um, the accounts have to be touched. If they're not going to be touched, you really need something or somebody else to help you out. And that's where the uh, the soft call service that ABC Omega offers is beneficial to us. Um, it's like I said, it, it's key. And we, I guess, my my aerospace division. Who, who first started off with it, uh, as Chip, Chip mentioned or Bob mentioned, where they went from two, two and a half people down to a temp. Uh, they were like in a very similar situation. You can't hire employees. Um, they have some temps. The temps come and go, and there's no, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, consistency involved. Because you have a temp in one week, they're gone a week, two weeks later, a month later, and then you start back at square one. Uh, where the beneficial help from, from ABC Omega came in was a lot of consistency. You had Betty calling the customers all the time, so they end up working up a, a just like our divisions do now, you get a relationship building uh, between Betty from ABC Omega and John from ABC Customer. Um, right. So that's that's one of the things that, that really helped out uh, a lot for everybody. Well, let me let me mention then for Superman, Bob, um, when you got involved, you kind of jumped in. You had your you had your reservations as well, and I'm sure many credit managers that are on this call have the same thoughts. Um, and you really worked us hard on the contract for your divisions. To make sure yeah. that all the the eyes were dotted and T's were crossed, because you know even though Mark set the standard or at least got the IT thing going, um, you wanted to make sure that this was an egg on your face for your divisions. So right. what did you learn by working on this? What, I mean, aside from you really you were really tough on us when it came to negotiations, which is fine. Um, what what else did you learn about about first party collections? Is it as far-fetched maybe as you thought it was? Well, let me just say that, you know, every every division, you know, every business unit is different and has uh, different needs, you know. So not, you know, not everybody is going to have the same uh, needs or requirements. I just know from, from my perspective, we had a business unit that was very troubled. Um, they had a lot of accounts, a lot of customers, they were not allowed to hire anybody. Um, so another FTE was not, uh, was not even possible in terms of uh, what, uh, what was allowed from our management. So we, we had to get creative, you know, and like I said, this started out sort of as a short-term solution, um, but at least we were able to, to get some help and get some stability uh, from your organization uh, again, in this division, my division had, had tried temps, too. They had tried hiring temporaries, and it was sort of like a revolving door, uh, which created more, more problems. Um, so your firm was able to provide some stability. You were able to pr provide the service that we need. You were flexible and to work with. Um, 
you were sensitive to our needs and what, what our requirements were in terms of touching our customers or the, the way you communicated with customers. You know, so, you know, for us, it was, it was a good fit and uh, it, it has worked out very well in terms of the results that we've seen, um, in terms of the performance, in terms of the DSO reduction, the past due reduction. Um, every business has to make a decision as far as whether or not it's good for them based on the, the costs uh, and the benefits uh, to those costs. Yeah, and let's let's be honest on this one as well, is that, you know, um, typically we, we work ourselves out of a job on this type of project. You know, a, a client comes to us, um, maybe it's a smaller company. It doesn't matter what size the company is, but if it's smaller and they take a segment of their portfolio, they send it to us, we strive to achieve those same kind of great results that we've done for you at Parker, um, and after a year, um, we're not needed anymore, and that's kind of mission accomplished. We know that that comes that comes yeah that exactly Mark Cruz. Um, uh, so that 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 happens. We understand that. But then in, in the case of Parker, I guess this leads to the next question: Has this impacted the way now that because you've instituted these soft call first party projects? Does this give you more clout with the divisions to say, hey, look, I've been watching your re your receivables, your 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 past dues are up, um, you're you're down a person or two. Does this give you more clout with them to be able to to uh, say, look, let's let's just move over a segment to ABC to handle? Sure. Chip, you want to take that? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think. You know, in, in, in cruder terms, I think I've got a lot more street cred. Um, but, uh, <laughs> it it, uh, it it certainly, I I think I think confidence in in you know, I think they've received some confidence from the people that they report up to, uh, general managers. You know, when you uh, group controllers, when you see the when you see the results, um, I think it's I, I think it speaks for itself. But in it. You know, as far as, you know, how I see, um, you know, how I see this, it's, you know, I know the customers are being contact, contacted. So it's not like, um, you know, when I start, when I do my uh, routine reviews, when I start to look at numbers even monthly, I don't have that, my heart doesn't go as quickly, right? I know, I know that con uh, accounts are being contacted. I know that I'm not going to be turning over a rock and finding a snake or, or whatever. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to have to uh, uh, really, uh, you know, exert, exert a whole lot of concern. Um, you know, and the credit, again, the credit risk, because I know these accounts, there's, there's less surprises. There's less bad surprises. And in, in the credit risk, uh, I feel a lot more comfortable because, because again, you know, we're not going to be calling on dead customers or, or dead accounts, accounts that haven't been touched. We don't know uh, who or where they are. Um, you know, we, we don't have to do that anymore. So it, it, it's definitely uh, lowered my blood pressure and, and uh, certainly lowered my stress levels, uh, knowing that uh, our folks have gotten some help and, uh, and, and ABC is uh, doing, doing good things to, uh, to make that happen. Oh, I'm glad and your, we hair is growing, and, and your hair is growing longer too. Oh, good. Well, and I'm glad we lowered your your blood pressure. That's the most important thing. Is it's a this was a health saver for you. Can we market this? Yeah, it's a health it's a health product too. So that that's great to know. I, I you know again credit man. What one of the things for all the people listening in? Um, what we advise any company that's considering this is. Um, there's a lot of tricks in our industry, believe it or not. Some companies don't give it a good reputation, and sometimes companies will double dip where, hey, we'll handle it for you on a first party, and then we'll handle it on a third party. What we always advise our clients, just as we did for Parker Hannafin, is if they're really aged out, uh, it doesn't look like there's a track record of, of uh, payment performance. It's probably just best going off to third party for ABC Omega collections versus the first party where we call representing our client because um, chances are if we if you spend the money on soft call first party you're probably going to be spending it on third party why why spend twice when you can just go to one so 
we always advise our, our clients and prospects before you do this, make sure that you've really looked at that portfolio and determine if it's third party type paper or first party. Um, yeah. Which leads us, I guess, go ahead, somebody has a point there? Yeah, so, you know, leave leave the sales point to me because that's, that's all I that's all I care about You're right now. Salesman, I'm right. a sales guy, right? So, um, <laughs> I would say, uh, you know, as Parker grows, or uh, continues to grow and acquire new companies. I, when can we expect some new small projects to come in? Oh, there you now? go. <laughs> the sales pitch. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, though, um, maybe you can speak to it. Maybe we can think, I guess it would be a good time to think post pandemic. Um, you know, what are your plans for the future as it relates to collections outsourcing? Uh, do you see you continuing to, you know, use the service? Do you, you want to? think you might scale it back, ramp it up, maybe a little bit of both um, for different projects. Um, maybe you can give some insight uh, as to that. Sure, I, I can take that, Antonio. Yeah, I, I think the, the the divisions that I'm involved in uh, definitely see this as a long-term, either long-term solution or long-term option. Um, I think there's still some struggling areas, some struggling business units. Uh, and again, you know, finding ways to fit um, to fit the ABC uh, Amigo model in that to scale it, I have got some divisions that might only need a couple, a uh, couple hundred uh, accounts or you know some smaller things and maybe uh, maybe something a little bit wider scale. You know the other thing is that we're changing as well. Um, you know there's you know every company is in in constant flux, so you know just having the ability to uh, customize and be flexible. Um, you know, it, it is very important to us, and you know, we're going to look to look to find uh, more ways to get ABC Amiga involved. That's good to hear, Antonio. Smiling from ear to ear. So, as as we um, sort of move on, we've got seven minutes left. Um, as Krista mentioned before, early on for all all participants and and attendees um, at, at the beginning of the webinar, we've got resources on our website that cover these phases of first party. Uh, there's some great tips, uh, some real good ideas as to if you're considering something like this, whether it's with us or another firm, there's some great tips on how you hold that vendor responsible, how you make sure that they're accountable and they're not just taking your money, whether it be flat fee or contingent, and just um, wasting your time. So uh, as you can see there, the hyperlink on the bottom is um, there's some great articles for all of you to be able to, to look at and use to your advantage. And uh, with that, I, I guess we can go on to questions now. Um, Krista, I know that you've uh, you've been sort of watching the, the questions as they come in. Are there any that you wanna bring up up front right now or? Yep, I just wanna let you know, for those of you who um, are unfamiliar with how to submit one, you just go to the questions pane in your control panel, type it right in and uh, we'll read it aloud here. So our first question is um, about data safety and confidentiality. It, it's a common concern when allowing data visibility. Were there any challenges regarding this topic? And what would you advise, um, you know, what, how would you advise to, to handle it? Well, in, in our case, you know, we, we're providing read-only access. You know, so you, there's nothing you can do to the system per se. You know, you have access to the information, um, but you also have access to the documents that you need uh, to get the customer what they need so that you can collect on the balances owed. I would also add where you've been able to help us is like even in the case of um, freight issues or tax exemption certificates. You know, you've been able to help us in the, re the resolution of these types of items that maybe aren't as complex as some of the other internal issues that we need to deal with. But again, it's been able to be a big help to us uh, so we can focus on um, higher priority matters with our customers and resolution of internal, uh, internal dirty laundry that, that we need to clean up on our side. So that's what I would add. Yeah, thank you. On that point as well, for for um, 
for data safety. Many times on, on that question, our clients will have us complete a security questionnaire. So they hold us accountable to that uh, to make sure that we meet the standards that their IT protocols require. And all, there's always an NDA in place too to make sure there's confidentiality and there's always a secure FF, SFTP site where all of the documentation and information data is dropped that's protected. So um, there's, if there's data security concerns, hold your vendor responsible, put out, um, we have examples of those types of questionnaires that our clients have passed on to us that we can provide to you if you're interested in seeing those to anyone who's, who's considering a project like this. Um, I, I, the other question uh, that came in now, I'll just quickly cover, is there, if there is a dispute or deduction that needs to be worked, does the ABC team do that or is it shifted over to Parker? That's a great question. What we found is certain divisions of Parker prefers when it's a, when it's a heavily disputed issue that we, would, that we do not handle it, that we then escalate it back to them at Parker because chances are, and some of our reports are very, very intuitive uh, pivot table reports that will show you, hey, a lot of your problems are coming from pricing issues or product inferiority or misquoted pricing from the, the salespeople. So very quickly, we will find out really in that portfolio if the problem is financial from, from your customers or if you have some internal issues. But Heavily disputed problems, typically, um, in Parker's case, we send it back to them. Um, so one division really allows us to handle the disputes because, again, they just don't have people to handle these small accounts. Um, so they ask us to sort of run with the dispute. They give us some authority as far as if a settlement or something like that, if it's applicable. But um, when it comes to disputes, if we're trained, if we get the knowledge base from our client up front on how to handle disputes that are common, then, then we can handle it from A to Z. So it really depends on our client's preference. Are there other questions? So um, one of the questions that came in asked about training. How do you, as a, as a client, go about training ABC uh, the, the FTEs that will be working your accounts, how do you train them about your products, your company culture, your systems, tactics, you know, so it does really seem to be a seamless uh, service? But, yeah, Chip, I think, um, you know, for your purposes, again, you were, you were sort of the hands-on guy, um, sure. the training. I know that uh, you, you wanted to make sure, your divisions wanted to make sure that we sweat the details, that we sound like, I, I won't mention the division because I don't know if it's allowed, but we have to sound and talk like them on, on a particular call with a client, with a customer. Um, do you remember the training that was involved with that? I know it was pretty arduous. Yeah, I, I think it was, you know, really just kind of going through, uh, you know, going through the Pareto and, you know, going through customers, understanding, you know, what types of customers are, whether they're OEMs or distributors, how we, how we like to handle um, those types of customers. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it, it is on the, there's a lot of on the job training. I think there's a, lo a lot of great communication between the two parties. So um, I know one of my divisions, they, the, the meetings, and the calls were weekly to start off, and then uh, you know now we're now we're more biweekly. Another division where I think things were were pretty much um, discovered up front is a little bit more of a monthly. But it's really it's really the kind of communication, the ongoing communication, the escalation reports uh, that come out uh, in handling uh, issues where the, where there needs to be a handoff between um, ABC and Mega. And then Parker, I think there's a lot of learning in, involved in there. So that's, you know, a lot of it is on the job. Uh, but yeah. we feel very comfortable with, with the knowledge that ABC Omega has. Okay. Um, I, I think, you know, again, we're up on the hour and we, we want to respect everybody's time. So 
we, we can kind of end it here. But what I will say very quickly is this. We, um, what we've appreciated with Parker and we kind of insist on with our other clients through our experiences is that when we do a project, in order for it to be successful, we do need one primary contact person for escalations back at at the office. So if um, even though we have system access and sometimes we can even retrieve invoices and things like that in order to resolve an issue, if if we can quickly and seamlessly turn on a dime back to a contact person at Parker Hannafin that can help us when there's something more that we don't have access to, that's the key because resolutions in first party, you really need to do it on the fly. The faster you can do it, the more likely you're gonna start training those customers to put your invoice at the top of the inbox versus um, at the bottom. So on that note, uh, we've run out of time. Krista has some extra housekeeping. Yep. No, I just wanted to let you all know that if um, you would like to re-listen to this um, presentation, because, you know, Parker's responses obviously were not typed into the handouts, a uh, recording of it will be available on our website at the address that you're seeing right there on your screen, abcomega.com forward slash webinar series. It should be up by tomorrow, if not by today. Also wanted to take a moment to thank our friends at Parker for uh, making themselves available for this program. We really appreciate um, your friendship and your time today. And thanks to Dom and Antonio for keeping us going here. Thank you, Krista. Our next program is going to be on Tuesday, May 18th on the topic of returning to work. Mm. And by work, we mean the office. Nice. So, yeah, that will be presented by Trevina Broussard. She's a corporate trainer and consultant. And uh, our invitations to register for that program will be going out next week. So if you're not already subscribed to receive our webinar invites, you can do so at the same address here that's on your screen, or just shoot us an email at info at abcomega.com. Or when you exit the program today, we'll have a survey um, for your feedback on today's program. And in that survey, you can also request to receive our webinar invites. So we appreciate your time. Returning to the office. Boy, that reminds me of Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible then. That's for sure. That's going to be a tough one. He had to get that in there. I had to get it in there. I love playing with that song. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Thank day. Bye-bye.